I'm sad that we finished this. I know. I finished it. I'm like, really? We're done? Oh, okay. It was getting pretty good. Yeah, like it it uh it's got everything that that somebody even with our, our range age range would enjoy because there's like we're familiar with each and every single one of the monsters. Right. Even the really silly ones. <laughs> Oh, like Crocodile Dude in the last episode? <laughs> <laughs> or repti- the Monkey Reptilicus? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those the were primate like... from the Antarctic, or no, was it the Arctic? It was like Northern Alaska or whatever it was. I think so, yeah. It's like they were trying to mix Reptilicus and uh, the original thing together. Yep. Yeah, and they made some angry monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was interesting, at least. Yeah, I, I think I marked that one down as being my least favorite. But the further on you go, I think the last episode with the gator might have been that one. As far as the worst one? or The one I I enjoyed the least. Oh, the one I enjoyed the least was more the, the nightly murders. The, the black knight. suit of armor with the black armor. And I'm like, I don't know. I just felt that was dull the whole time. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> and the conclusion wasn't great. He like taps him with the fucking hammer, and he falls apart. <laughs> well, he, the suit impales itself on the axe. This oh. big heavy axe he could barely lift up, and I'm like, oh my god, Scooby Doo could kill this guy better than that. And they were talking about that it was blessed by Pope Gregory. Yeah. Pope Gregory is responsible for thousands of deaths. Like, he's a fucking sad- sadistic murderer in the name of Christianity. Like, the Druids, all gone. Thank you. Thank you. All gone. Oh, yeah. He wasn't part of the Spanish Inquisition by any means, but uh, definitely the Crusades. Oh, yeah. I mean, you definitely got a little bit of religious badness going on here. Yeah. But he was a cocksucker. He burned all the witches. Burn him alive. <laughs> Burn the witch. Burn the witch. <laughs> okay, so what did what were some of your favorite like monsters or episodes? Clearly, we've already started. Yeah, right. Hello, everybody. My favorites, I, I want to say, was episode 16. That was the Demon and Lace. Oh, yes. That one was was pretty entertaining. And then uh what was it, episode 14? The Trevi Collection. And oh, that the one, witchcraft one, yes. Yeah, and and that had uh, Angelique from Dark Shadows. That's uh, where I I recognized her from. Then, yeah, she. I kept the, looking at her like I I know that scream from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, I have her name right here. Where is it? Yeah, I thought I had it right here. Demon and oh, that's that's Demon and Lace. No, I don't have it there. We'll we'll edit that in post. But yeah, she was great in it, and and <laughs> it was hard not to be like, not to expect that she's the witch because she always is cast or typecasted as a witch. A little bit, yes. So, so you knew that she was going to end up being the bad guy b- before it even got halfway through. But still, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, if you didn't recognize her, it, I thought it was actually well paced out. You kind of led with her at the beginning. Then you maybe kind of felt, oh, she's just a red herring. It, it's too obvious. And then it kind of comes back around at the end and it proves to truly be her. It's like, oh, I should have stuck with my gut on that one. Right? <laughs> I lost the bet with myself. And that was yeah. Laura Parker who played Laura Angelique. Parker, that's right. Yeah, I knew I had it written down. She was neat. I, I, I liked the way that they killed her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First, Carl tries to drown her in blue hair dye, so she comes out looking like fucking Smurfette. And then he accuses her of being a witch in front of people, and that takes away her power and saps away her life force. <laughs> like, well, shit, that was easy. Well, and then she was committed to a mental institute to forever be damned in her own mind. <laughs> you that was that was that pretty case. ironic, I thought. You know. His intros and, and outros, or his stingers, whichever way you want to call it, or whatever you want to call it, they're almost poetic. Oh, yeah. I really like them. There's one one episode where 
you could tell it's very much where Hoyt Axton gets his monologue at the end of Gremlins. Like where he's talking about, you know, if, if your washing machine is on the fritz or your dryer or your refrigerator goes out, you just might have a gremlin. Carl did, uh, does a similar thing in one of these episodes. Uh, I noticed that at the end of episode 19, where it was kind of like a fourth wall break. He's not talking into his tape recorder. He's not, he's specifically looking at the camera at you and he's yeah. having a conversation with you. And I'm like, this is the first time I saw a fourth wall break in this. That was, that was pretty interesting. I'm like, are they were they leaning towards going in that direction with upcoming episodes? Who knows? But it was definitely I noticed that. And I'm like, that's very different. Oh, well, my watch just made a noise, and I don't want anybody to. <clears throat> I don't want to owe anybody a beer for making noise. Sorry. Uh oh, another dollar into the noise jar. Exactly. Where are we just leaving off? Oh, uh, oh we're his, just talking his, about his, the fourth wall the, break and our favorite monsters. He actually winked at that point, didn't he? I didn't catch the wink, but I I don't know. He might have. I don't know. Like the, the way he delivers that is so fantastic. Like yes, he's I felt like he was Rod his... Serling in the Twilight Zone recapping something when he was doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And he has the perfect fucking voice for it. Like it's oh god, yeah, he does. It's so interesting, and, and his inflections are perfect. It, all of his lines are basically given perfectly. Yeah, he he had a full grip on his character and the way the character would speak, so he totally bought into him, like, every single second. Yeah, and I don't know if it helps that they had some shitty actors on there to make him look even better. But well, they had uh, Eric Estrada on, I mean, hey... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well, got... whoever they got for helen of troy um she was gorgeous and she nailed it i loved her of all of the female guest stars in the second half she was outstanding she was pretty cool I, when they said i liked her helen of troy i was like oh that deceitful bitch what won't she do <laughs> well i re- that's what i really i know we're cycling back to like favorite monsters but like of all the ones in the second half of this season here, she's the one that I'm like, I'm into that because of how it played out and how they characterized her and how the actress really got into it. And she had good chemistry with Kolchak and just how it ended was even better. You have shamed the gods for the last time, woman. <laughs> you are now turned to stone. And he tosses himself under the bus to do it. Like, I, yeah. I'm not worth giving to the gods. What are you trying to pull? <laughs> this is not the second time, bitch. Are you trying Go to get swindle stoned. Them? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Although, that reminds me of a line. I forgot which episode. I think it's the last episode. Um, oh, no. It's the same episode. It's with the taxi cab. And the drunk guy comes up while they're talking about all the greekness and the greek gods and how to potentially destroy her and how to get the ring off his hand and the and they're just going back and forth between you know talking and the drunk guy goes stoned who's getting stoned (laughs) (laughs) and i just died laughing he just wouldn't go away like i want to be part of this party too (laughs) i'm so rich dude i got drunk i got a fancy hotel yeah, that's not the fanciest hotel. The fanciest hotel is in Russia. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The... <laughs> but speaking of that guy, he was just another part of a great variety of, like, I don't want to say stereotypes, but almost caricatures. Yeah, there was a lot of caricatures in the show. Yeah, and it's... I'm white, so you can't say you can't take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> Although, um, the dits... Yeah, I, I guess the dits is pretty much me to a T, but no, I want to say they were non, no, they weren't non-offensive. They were, they were kind of shitty every which way you look at it. <laughs> yeah, but they all had, had, did bring value to the show in each episode. So it's not like they just kind of sat around and detracted from, from anything. They actually accentuated the scenes they were in and helped keep things a little, either a little more aloof or a little more serious at times, like even in say like the last episode, I know we're going to talk about this a lot, but it's the last episode ever. So we're going to reference this one probably a little more, but even the Dr. Uh, Heidecker, I believe his name was, 
he was played so serious it was a little over the top but not so over the top you couldn't it took you out of the episode because it was a pretty heavy episode the only thing that might have taken you out was the creature actually yeah the rest of it was kind of neat yeah like he looked to me kind of like the alligator from willie's wonderland so i wanted to like him but even though you see less of the alligator on willie's wonderland that guy was actually kind of creepier yeah i'll give you that <laughs> there was nothing wrong with it it's, it's just it's no. cheesy it it's was 70s sci-fi horror yeah. so that's what you get with the practical is sometimes you get the goofy you can even go back to the chopper episode which is another excellent episode with the headless motorcyclist chopping people's heads off with a sword i mean you look at that outfit you know where the head is at on that guy and where the shoulders and where the arms are the mouth, fuck up it's here. Like three feet above his head <laughs> and it's but you could suspend the disbelief because this was the 70s they didn't have the modern technology to make it look good like they can nowadays that stuntman bless his heart probably couldn't see for shit that's why he was only going in straight lines and he was not a weapons master like he was swinging that sword around like it was a fucking chain <laughs> yeah he was swinging around but, like like we would swing a sword around we've we have no sword skills around here even though i got multiple swords in this house <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean, between the sword play <laughs> and and the height of his shoulders like that, was that episode was pretty fantastic. Now, I thought it was going to be an Ichabod Crane type thing when we saw the Headless Motorcyclist. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah, because Ghostbusters did that in like 88 or something like that. And it was pretty cool then, too. Yeah, but this guy, no, it's just it was more like Poltergeist than it was uh, Sleepy Hollow. I know, especially with a vintage bike, too. I mean, they went all detail oriented. They didn't just go, oh, it's a modern bike, but it's a dead you know soul doing this now it's it was a complete um package deal yeah right it's like it was a uh, for lack of a better term before the the 2000s it was like he was riding a, a an indian motorcycle something that people hadn't seen in two decades right or something, uh, something indian bikes are awesome yeah they really are my cousin's got three of them i think or has, has had three of them oh my god i'm jealous <laughs> uh, he used i mean to i can't drive but i think those are beautiful bikes they are. He used to work there. Okay. Uh, and so it's he, he's just forever gotten discounts or what, what have you. Ah. Still expensive, though, but you get what you yes. pay for. This is true. Yeah. But he, his, th this headless biker was a little bit more complicated than what you would have thought. Because like I said, they, they start out at the beginning making you think it's going to be like Exorcist. Graves are, are, are moved. But yep. maybe maybe not the bodies. But then you find out, yes, bodies were also moved. And and it 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 did what? It set off his spirit yes. to go get revenge because he was no longer at rest. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate as far as my memory goes of that. Yeah. It's been a little while since I watched that episode, so just a little fuzzy. But I think you're, you're I think you're right. Yeah, and it it wasn't bad. It was cheesy. It, and the best part about it is. Is Carl knocked the motherfucker off the bike yeah. when he was with his with own his head. own head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I could think of was was like Al Bundy married with children, and he hits him, and I just went steer right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fucking, like, wow! Like everything else that happens to that thing, it was his own goddamn face and head that <laughs> knocked him yeah. off the bike. And took him out entirely because that was the end of the fight in one hit. Oh, yeah. Like, it was like that... God mode with Carl Kolchak in half of these episodes. One little thing and they're gone. Yeah. I mean, it's like I said with, with the Black Knight, I thought he just bumped him with the with the axe. I was like, well, that doesn't That's what it looked much. like. Well, it's like he was playing with like a LARP one, but the damn sword looked like it weighed like twice as much as Kolchak did. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> love those claymores. <laughs> but I mean, I know you say that it was probably your least favorite thing, 
and I, I didn't that. hate it. I would just, if I was going to rank it on a scale of five, I could, I'd probably go like two to two and a half stars on that one. Usually That's... I like that kind of shit. I don't know. That one just didn't jive with me for some reason. Well, for one thing, it's it's much easier then to get into Black Knight stories than it is yeah. now. I th- it's probably because I've seen way too many of them. Well, I think it's Monty Python has just ruined everything. Like, you can't see the Black Knight without hearing none shall pass. <laughs> if you can answer three questions, you shall pass. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a flesh wound. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, with the arms and the legs all getting chopped off. Like, that didn't happen, and so I was really disappointed. It was really anticlimactic compared to what we've seen. That actually would have been pretty funny to see something like that. Oh, there goes the forearm. Oh, there goes the other forearm. You lost your arm. <laughs> no, they actually did, just to go a little off topic just for a second, they actually made that the focal point of a show that was on Sci-Fi Channel years ago called The Secret Adventures of Jules Verne. Oh. I forgot the name of the enemy, but his body was like separated in like several parts arms the legs the chest the head everything and the whole storyline of the season the only season it had was to reunite all the body parts so he could reign supreme evil all over the planet earth again and it was a hokey show very cheesy but very enjoyable but that's what reminds me of this is all the arms being separated and then rejoining again and being a i don't know i don't know but that sounds like it has potential (laughs) <laughs> I do have that somewhere on a hard drive. I could let you check it out. It would take a long... It's a, a little slow at first, but it ends pretty decent. No, I did. Special effects were pretty good at the time, too. That's cool. It was a Canadian show. A uh, very early HD Canadian show that was doing some pretty good special effects. So Cool. The dirigible. The dirigible. Now, skipping... Is this backwards? Yeah, a little bit backwards. Sure. Let's go back to Paunch. Legacy of Terror. <laughs> Paunch walked to fucking cross the ice rink, butt naked. Like, totally butt naked. And up a long flight of stairs. <laughs> hey, give the dude credit. He looked like a stud back then. Dude, it is like I said last week. If you're going to pay me $500,000 to walk across the football field, you're going to have to pay me an extra $10,000 to put my clothes back on. So, I mean... I ain't got that cash. No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like a Hispanic Pied Piper with three blonde chicks that were all monsters. Playing the flute. Yeah. <laughs> Also, he could be a sacrifice. Like, he gave up his entire life just to have one great year of being somebody. And it, well, and to make sure his mother was taken care of. Oh, yeah, his mom. They didn't even show her, did they? No, that was just mentioned at the very end, probably because they felt, you know, that's not really much to be able to relate to with him. <laughs> <laughs> the scoring with three chicks and <laughs> and just living the life for for that long. Well, it was it was kind of hard to watch. <laughs> I don't Not know so for much... us guys, you know, scoring with three chicks. If you're into chicks, that's know. okay. That's just okay. Saying. But most most dudes I know don't know what to do with one chick, let alone two, especially not three. <laughs> yeah, they see three, they go running the other way. <laughs> I, I need Gatorade. <laughs> but no, that, that was kind of neat. Now, I, I thought those three ladies were also the three big, like, chicken dudes. Like Really? Yeah, because there was three chicken dudes. And there was three ladies. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, they, they must just transform into the gobbledygooker here. Because, <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, and, and then that one, I couldn't find that terribly threatening. Because, again, these dudes just looked like the gobbledygooker, like, running around, waving their arms in interpretive dance. Like, <laughs> just well, I was away. thinking. Yeah, I was thinking like Puma Man, you know, with uh, <laughs> with half of this. But, you know, the, the design on the main um, 
Eagle Headdress, uh, the main guy. I forgot what his name was. But that was a pretty cool look, as goofy as it was, but it was a cool look. Yeah, yeah. And then they brought in a mummy at the very end? It, uh, uh, kind of partway through the episode, they you saw it in the storage room, but then you didn't see it again till the end. Yeah, and, and that basically killed two birds with one stone, because, I mean, you've got your Aztec uh, curse, curse type story. And then you've also got a mummy type story. So, I mean, they right. just did, did away with the Egyptian stuff and just went the Aztec way. Which was I, fine by me because I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the most interesting thing, <laughs> when Ponch was walking uh, uh, naked across the fucking ice rink, had this big old fucking feather headdress and all I could hear was, her name was Lola. She was a showgirl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Like, he looked like he was getting ready to go sing and dance at the Copacabana. True. I thought, was he trying out for Apocalyptico <laughs> like 30 years before it was made? He probably could. I like Eric Estrada. I, I, I tease yeah. it because it is Ponch. Like, that was a childhood hero for everybody. Yeah, and he's done some odd and somewhat fun movies here and there through the years. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think he's a pretty super person from what I know of him. Yeah. But I, I'm not going to shy away from a butt naked joke, neither. Hell no. Especially when it comes to three dudes dressed as the gobbledygooker that turn into hot blonde chicks. Yep, uh, and that's how he gets to run naked. Yeah. For free. And see, that's kind of the fun of these these episodes. It's like they're, they throw so much shit right at the wall, but it still maintains to be cool. Yeah, I didn't feel like they were just throwing mud at the wall just to see if it would stick. I think they were throwing mud at the wall because it's fun to throw mud at the wall. Yeah. And it, you didn't have to worry about it sticking. It was just fun to do. And I know there of all the drama there was behind the scenes about story you're editing this and Darren doing all this work that they all made a great show. And it was clear that they all had fun, even down to like, freaking updike you know and vincenzo where it was actually cool to see vincenzo on location and in, instead of in the office for an episode yeah I, was, I like literally gasped i'm like holy shit did the budget just increase they're in a casino <laughs> like, whoa what the fuck's going on here uh and and tony was kept so jarring better. Oh, seeing him outside and then yeah. dress dress actually nice, nice. Not yeah, like, I'm like, whoa. Not like he's cranking the Maalox as hard as he can at work. True. Which I think he still was doing was cranking Maalox. They uh they had him try doing yoga. Yep. To try to lose weight and well, he and... lost five pounds, didn't you notice? Yeah, right? In my toes. Well, I'm working on losing a few extra pounds and I'm five pounds down. I'm not like <laughs> <I've> been... <laughs> I went back to the to the, to the gym about uh, two weeks ago, and, and you I, haven't been back since. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like I can walk <laughs> at home. No, yeah. I, and I do. I have a treadmill in my house, so it's like if I'm not actually able to go to the gym, I just walk yeah. on the treadmill for a bit. So the unfortunate thing is, it's out here, <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's cold during the winter. Which I hate you right now. How how cold is it for you guys at night? Like it's in the 30s here. We're going to be getting close to freezing tonight, actually. And for around here, I mean, we're new down here, of course, down here in Phoenix. And that's pretty significant because I guess this is about as bad as it gets. But we also come from the frozen tundra. But, you know, getting used to like the, the 60 and the 70 and the 80 degrees around here during the normal times of the year. And once it hits like this kind of temperature, it feels like it's cold. Yeah, yeah doesn't help that like everything and this is my garage i know mean, we i call it the studio all the time but it's my garage it's as cold as you would think right and then of course you got to turn off the heater because you don't want noise on the microphone any more than i already make but whatever nah just smack the microphone like you kick the table it's all good and this has been pimp my studio with kevin smith <laughs> weather watch with jeff and kev yeah no <laughs> Were there any other cameos that you noticed that you thought were worth mentioning? 
Well, I tried to figure out who the girl lieutenant was at the end, but I think I ran out of time before I got distracted with all the other activities going around our house <laughs> after work. But um, the, the last episode, that girl lieutenant, I'm trying to remember what her even act, character name was. You know, the the sweet one everybody liked, and she ended up proving to be just as bad as everybody else was at the end. Yeah, Irene. Irene, uh-huh. yeah. I remember when she walked up to him at the very end and he's taking pictures, then he looks over and sees her legs and I just went, hello, legs. <laughs> and that's not in the, the way, it's just the way he looked at it is like, hello, legs. Yeah, kind of. And she started off really cool. Yeah, I really liked her. But I did not like the way that they wrote her overall. Yeah, towards the end, it got a little, they didn't need to go too far with that. It was very stereotypical, like, oh, I'm in charge, but I'm a girl. Uh, people are going to tell me what to do, even though they're my subordinates. It's like, uh, no. And well, I she... thought they'd do something different with her, actually. Yeah, like, it. she was the only cop that ever noticed Carl in disguise. I mean, she was smarter than most of the other fucking dudes. Yeah, she was like, I know who you are, or at least I think I know who you are. And, you know, granted, she didn't put up with a lot of his crap, but, like, when they were escorting him out the first time, and then the military guys tried to, like, be like, no, 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 we got it from here, and she's like, no, I got it from here, I literally thought they would get outside, and she would say, okay, tell me what's going on, we're going to figure out a plan to get down there and figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, that is just not what they did. If they had done that, with that little tweak, I think that might have made the episode just a little bit better. Yeah, because, I mean, by the end of the episode, they're writing her dialogue like it's from Mad Dog. Right. It was angry and hard. Yeah. Which it, it was nice to see him come back, though. Yes, it was. I was like, I know that voice. <laughs> and then I, looked, <laughs> then I looked up and I'm like, oh, yeah, that is him. No, uh, where was it? Was it in the witchcraft episode, Legacy of Terror? There was a gentleman named Dr. Sp- who was dressed basically like the man in the yellow hat what episode was that here is that yeah 116 so this was uh... oh serious i didn't even write the damn episode number down or <laughs> the episode title down oh, oh it is it is demon and lace yeah he looked like the man in the yellow hat and it was really funny to watch Carl punch him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because all I could think of is <laughs> that's what Curious George would do. He just fucking punched the motherfucker. Yeah. But did uh, did you did you recognize that guy? I did not, actually. That is the guy that played Psycho Dad on Married with Children. Oh, no shit. Yeah. That's why I said, you got to watch this. <laughs> You know, now that I think about it, maybe I do recognize him now, but when I was watching it, I did not recognize. Yeah. I was that I... man riding off into the sun who loved his wife, but who killed his wife, but loved his son. Psycho dad. <laughs> Psycho dad. Daddy, do I have to watch this? Yes, you do. As your father, when I find something of quality, I feel it's my responsibility that my child reap the benefits. TV is not all trash. <laughs> And now, back to Psycho Dad. <laughs> a little touched or so we're told. Killed his wife because she had a cold. Might as well, she was getting old. Psycho Dad. Psycho Dad. Psycho Dad. He's quick with a gun. And his job ain't done. Killed three wives by 21. He's Psycho Dad. This is why we must give the PBS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a bunch of nerds over here. Mm. Nerd, nerd alert. <laughs> but that whole that, that whole demon and lace episode, like it it kind of got me. I, I liked it. Like it I uh, like that one too, because they started off with a 50s vet picking up a hot chick. Yes. And you could tell this was another one of those things that kind of inspired uh, what's their names? The Warrens. And oh, yeah. Warren, 
he had a book that he talked about with the family that they helped during a haunting that had a succubus in the house. So it was really easy to figure out what was going on here if you were familiar with any of their stories. And they're basically rape demons. Yeah. They they wrote them as consensual in this episode, so that's great. But it was basically a spirit inhabiting the body of a freshly dead woman and then going and having sex with random dudes. Yep. Yeah. I a little think... harmless necrophilia never hurt anybody. No, that's not true. That is not true. I, I don't know what the name of the disease is, but I have. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am not. Dig this. So oh. my one of my best friends, my brother from growing up, Emiliano, uh, went to college in San Luis Obispo. And I, we hadn't seen each other in about a year or so. But And, and I went to go visit him. And he was telling me about this girl that, that he was friends with who had just recently broken up with her boyfriend and she had gone to the doctor because something just wasn't, she had a rash down below really kind of nasty ish. And she wanted to know why. And the, <laughs> the doctors told her. So basically she's immediately understanding that her boyfriend was cheating on her Yeah, and she got an STD lady's boyfriend was a mortician. Mm. Honest to fucking God. <laughs> well, that sounds like another pull track episode waiting to happen. <laughs> uh, it's not right. Or it, it follows. follows. Yeah. You know, because it, it's just like Sam Kinison said life keeps on fucking you even after you're dead. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, truly, the greatest part of that was. The gentleman who plays Frosty the Snowman is the coach of these boys who, <laughs> who died of heart attacks. And when they're asking him, Coach, what do you what could have killed these boys that are in perfect health? And it's Frosty the Snowman starting to give a lecture on STDs. <laughs> and you close your eyes, and it's the most horrible fucking thing you could think of. <laughs> yeah. And because my daughter, she watches Frosty all the fucking time. That's just her jam. So it's like he's not altering his voice. That is just the way he sounds. And <laughs> if you're old like we are, you're getting a, a Christmas lecture about STIs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that kind of won the show for me. That was my shining moment. There was Frosty's STDs. <laughs> I don't know. I think one of the episodes that really like won me over was when we got came back after our little break watching episode eleven, seeing Carl <laughs> Kolchak calm, cool, and collected for like thirty five minutes of the episode. <laughs> In the last fifteen minutes, he just goes crazy like normal Carl <laughs> Kolchak. It was just weird. He was just nice, cool, calm, collected. Yeah, Vincenzo, this is this, this is that, and update this, update that. I'm like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> Nothing's wrong. It's just he finally he geared it up towards the very end of the episode. That uh that episode was a little harsh at first. Like it it took me a while to realize, oh hey, this is not what I think is going on. What the Hindu I knew or the what was it called? The the Hindu Rakshasa. Rakasha, Rakasha, Rakasha uh, is basically a, yeah. It's basically a hobgoblin yeah. that appears uh, as someone you trust, and that was a good episode because you found out, despite the fact that Carl's always said he doesn't trust anybody, he does. He trusts Miss Emily, and it was fantastic as as the things creeping towards him as Miss Emily and talking with her voice. He shoots her right in the fucking stomach. <laughs> like, yep. no, maybe it's not her. Maybe it is. I don't know. He just fucking shoots her right in the stomach. And the poor lady playing Miss Emily has this pillow that makes her look like she's pregnant. Yep. And, they've got, and they've got a squib in there. And it blows out. And you see fluff blowing out the front. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty funny. And then it cuts away. Like they, they meant to edit that fluff out, but they needed to get the bullet shot in. <laughs> yeah, they needed to get just enough in. They, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that, 
that was neat. It was it was a little uncomfortable at first because uh, I wasn't paying attention to the swastikas. I'm just kind of like, ooh, fuck, you could put those on TV back then. But again, those yeah, were the Tibetan. Yes, that's true. But these were again Tibetan swastikas, which are which were polar opposite anyway. Yeah. yeah, polar opposite of what those were made out to be later. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it's when they said a Hindu Nazi, I'm like military intelligence what second i started watching the episode i'm like oh you can't do that these days yeah no and then i felt super bad for the couple walking down the fucking alleyway all afraid and shit because there's all these all these swastikas everywhere it's like it's fucking horrible do we not can we not show that well they also made it a point like several times through the episode too so if you tuned in at different points Somebody was constantly explaining it about every 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah. Which, again, is good. But, um... <laughs> yeah, it, it was a little at first. But once the show they... was wild. Yeah. Like, they got away with just about everything. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> again, again, Hindu Nazi is probably the greatest fucking oxymoron that I've ever heard, like those just two things don't happen together. <laughs> oh, I know, right? But um, no, I mean it was it, it was a neat episode. It had Sergeant Bilko with a cameo, so I mean That's that was kind of cool. And and it does it it does kind of open your eyes to see another culture's issues and fears yeah. that they have to go through. It's it's a little humbling. It, it just makes me hate people for treating other people like that. Yeah. I agree. But then you got a monster eating everybody, and it means we're all the same. Yeah, we everybody got to eat. We're all food. And buffet is open 24-7. Kind of. There was a few episodes like this where the people were buffets. You the, the werewolf in the last episode, or the last, our last episode, he was just munching on everybody on that boat. Jeez, we talk about all this and like one of our upcoming episodes in the near future is going to be covering Hannibal. The TV ah, show. You know, I I want to say I'm as excited for that as I was for this, but I am truly more excited to talk about Hannibal or watch Hannibal than I was Night Stalker. And that's nothing against Night Stalker. We all know I've said nothing but great things about it, but no, this is good fun right here. I got to see like the first two or three episodes of Hannibal automatically fell in love with it. Didn't get to finish watching any of the rest of it. So it's like, I am so pumped to finally see this. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it all the way through, except for the one episode that they took off air before it aired uh, in the middle of the first season, which uh, was due to like some school shooting. So obviously due to sensibilities, they yanked it off TV and didn't air it, but I have the set and I can't wait to watch that. Yeah. That was was Anna Gasteyer or Molly Shannon. It was someone Mm. from, from SNL played Hannibal's psychiatrist, but she was also a child psychiatrist and she was convincing kids to become serial killers. So, yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah, and this happened... It it was going to air just after Sandy Hook happened. Right. So they're like, yeah, no. Yeah, not so much. In the grand scheme, you don't feel like you missed too much from the story, but I can't wait to see it in context, so... Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. It'll be a little hard again, because Sandy Hook has happened more than once. Yeah. They just called a Duvaldi the next time. But again... I, I love that universe. I've read all three of Thomas Harris's books. Four. Four. And I just, I, I can't wait to talk about that one. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one. Yeah. This one, though. <laughs> God, this is such a time warp for this show. It, uh, it is, because we talk about... All about the 70s, man. Well, we talk about this, and then we jump forward, because it reminds us of other things. And, well, and, then, and things are much inspired by Kolchak. Yes, and having watched this whole thing now, and I'm able to look back on it, this is Kolchak is part of a TV sh- or, uh, TV trilogy that's like the Divine Comedy. In, right. in in literature, everything after the Divine Comedy 
was based on something that, that Dante had written. Everything from horror all came out from that. Television horror, I think this is probably probably sitting on the right-hand side of Rod Serling. And on the other side of Rod Serling would be Barnabas Collins. So we've got right. Dark Shadows, Kolchak, and, and Twilight Zone. Everything that came after those shows it was just mimicking or inspired by. Like they they perfected what TV horror should be. Right. And they totally delivered. And you know, unfortunately it, it wasn't meant to last. And you know, all the factors that happened and it and it ended. There is nothing to be ashamed of with this show. It succeeded on multiple levels and inspired genre for years that yeah. still to this day it's felt everywhere like the most recent is clearly like supernatural but like there was a show a few years ago you know sci-fi channel fans will recognize when i say the chronicle which was a newspaper organization that covered sci-fi alien and horror events to varying degrees of success and failure it wasn't that great of a show but then you go back to like x-files where you can even go look at the episode Mr. Ring for government yes. conspiracy going on. That was perfect. It felt like a complete setup for an X-Files uh, season, let alone, you know, the whole concept of the show. And, you know, just so many influences. It's it's such a great show. It was such fun to watch this for the first time in forever. I'd only seen beats, seen bits and pieces on Sci-Fi Channel when it re-ran years ago, but hey, I love watching this one. Yeah, I I like watching this this series too, and I I will always look back on those times in, in Sci-Fi Channel where you just randomly catch an episode. Yeah, where this was almost like Mystery Science Theater, where you don't need to know what happens in the last episode. Like they're they're all pretty much standalone. You just right. need to know that. Kolchak is a reporter. Tony's his boss. Updike's a prick, but has his moments. Yep. And Miss, Miss Emily is the sweetest person on earth. Uh, <laughs> it does make me wonder if there's a, an episode order that people like to watch this in. Like, what's the, what's your favorite way to end the season? Is it with the 20th episode or is it a different episode where you're like, this is how I prefer to go out with Kolchak? Oh, gosh. You know what? I I go with it just the way it was because this is how I've seen it now. Yeah, I, I like the order the way it went. I would have liked to have seen the the other, what was it, three episodes you said that they had written? Yeah. I would have loved to have seen that come to fruition. Just because it, the, the last episode wasn't bad by any means. It, no. it, was all, it was all inspired by like James Bond type stuff and, and even the thing. But <laughs> and Kolchak was driving an enforcer from Space Mutiny throughout the entire show. <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny! And boy, he couldn't drive that thing straight if his life depended on it. No, he was like a drunk guy, but he was sitting so casually, like he had one hand on the fucking steering wheel and the other hand like on his uh, across the arm. Or the, all he was missing seat. was like a beer in his hand, being like, yeah. A bear in his hand and a woman. Like, that's all he needed. It was cruising. See him rolling. But, like, he was, like, almost bebopping off the fucking tunnel walls. Like, boop, 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 boop. You know, it makes me pong. think, like, Austin <laughs> Powers stole the idea from him on that. Yes. Yes. And I mean, uh, not stole. They probably It was probably an homage. That's just what I say. But Yeah. Between this and maybe Dr. No. Yep. Something, something to that effect. But they, they did do a few nods to, to James Bond. Uh, oh, yeah, especially <laughs> with musical cues, too. Yeah, Carl trying to put his flick his hat up and not, not being able to make it was pretty funny. Every single time. Yeah, like that that was pretty special. Because, if you, again, if you are a James Bond fan, it's neat to see other James Bond fans doing that type of shit. Yeah, and these guys clearly had a fun time with Bond. So Yeah, and then going back to the evolution of Carl that we talked about last episode, I, I think he comes to a perfect spot where, yeah, he's dubious and devious and shit, but he's still a good person. Like, yes. He ribs the shit out of Tony the entire season. 
but runs to Tony's aid the moment he hears him say, Kolchak, please. As yeah, he's he like, Tony stopped. Say, yeah, it was like, like hearing glass break, and he went running. And that wasn't something you'd seen him do at any given point in time in the rest of the series. So, I mean, that was really cool. He really had an affection for Tony, and I really liked their chemistry. I felt like if we were going to have another season, though, Vincenzo needs to lighten up a little bit more. (laughs) He cannot be such a hard-ass J. Jonah Jameson. He cannot be the hardline (laughs) boss. He's got to be able to see, like, he's not wrong. I mean, there was an episode in the second half. I think it was... Uh, I think it was the Mr. Ring episode where they had the story and they tried to publish it and it just oh. got shit canned everywhere. And he's just like, we have a story. It is perfect. And they all got shot down. And it's like, maybe after that you evolve a little and you're like, I know you're onto something. It's a little weird. Let's just try and tackle this as realistically as possible. We don't always have to put the supernatural spin on it. If it's way too goofy, (laughs) we can just put out, you know, we can frame it a different way and still get the same story out. Yeah. But, you know, hope if they, we had had another season, that's what I would have liked to have seen a little growth in that regard of, no, I know, I know your ideas are crazy, (laughs) but I gotcha. Let's just try and figure this out together though. Stop doing stuff on your own. Yeah, it would have been really neat to... As far as the articles, anyway. Yeah, it, it would have been neat to see it just even just one episode of Tony actually being the one to see the supernatural shit. Yeah. That that I would I think it would have been funny. Just just one time, and it would have worked great. Oh, yeah. I That might have been something they could have been cluing in for on a season two as well. Yeah. I mean, it's not something that you'd want to see happen all the time because that would take away the specialness of that one time. Right. But it definitely could have happened. Like, they were both great actors. They could have role swapped. It would have been fun. Oh, yeah. That would have been hilarious. Oh, speaking of hilarity. Uh Uh-oh. The scene where, uh, what was it? Updike kept telling him to stop parking in in his parking spot. Oh, my God, yes. And the next time he parks in my spot... I'm going to have your car towed. <laughs> and whose car really got towed? <laughs> yeah. Updike. Carl parks in the dude's, or parks in Updike's parking spot, moves his car when he's done, and then has somebody else take Updike's keys and move the car back into his parking spot. <laughs> yeah. So when the tow trucks got there, they ended up towing Updike's car. <laughs> I know Updike was like the complete punching bag of this season, but I don't know. That seemed to it seemed like a good friendly pranking sort of banter that was going on. It's I don't think Kolchak like hated him, but I think between him and Vincenzo, they definitely felt like He's not the kind of reporter for the hard-hitting stories. So, shut up. <laughs> yeah, like, Tony wanted to send him on on the things that he didn't want Carl to do, but he was too squeamish to deal with bodies, like the sight, the sound, the smell, like, he didn't... He, he would do it squeamish. as a punishment to Kolchak, you know. I didn't send you to San Francisco. I sent him to San Francisco. That's right. That was my San Francisco trip. Well, sometimes you gotta show up for work. <laughs> imagine that <laughs> but yeah i mean that that would have been fun to see too again getting them out of the out of the office yeah like in the the episode with estrada that that was fun it would have been fun to see a little bit of that in the next series next season not series yeah and they sectioned off a whole arena for that too so that was pretty cool yeah right it, <laughs> like even back then that was that was pretty impressive because that's still expensive. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's about the time they're like, "Hey, you can pay us to be in our to do stuff here." <laughs> then again, on the other hand, was hockey truly that big in '74? Yes, was it okay? Well, it, I mean, they're in. If did they shoot in Chicago? I don't. God damn, I didn't even think to look that up. But if they shot in Chicago, definitely because that's Blackhawks territory. Would that have been United Stadium or United Arena back then, or was that? I don't know. Uh, I wasn't I know. much into hockey, but I do remember like 
even in like the late seventies and early eighties, like hockey was king down there, and in the Midwest in general. That's cool, because uh, yeah, it's like my only exposure to hockey in the seventies is like watching Slapshot. Everything I know about hockey is from like the late nineties on. Yeah. No, the same here. I just I, I remember a little bit, especially like the like the movie Miracle, where it's based off of the um eighty four Olympics, I think. Mm-hmm. Where uh USA won. Oh I don't think they won the gold, but I think they won the silver. But they beat Russia, which was a big deal. Yeah, and they didn't claim the the awards because they got screwed. Yeah. So they didn't uh, they didn't accept the the medals. Cuckoo Kachu got screwed by the Russians again, which seems to be a running trend. Yeah. Well, we didn't have any Russians in the second half of episodes. No, there wasn't, was there? There was no, even in the James Bond episode, there was no communism jokes. No, there was not. And you know what? That's okay. You don't, this was the type of show that didn't really need that sort of thing. Right. Dr. No means no, baby. Dr. No means no. Uh, but they had that, like you said, that that government conspiracy where, like you said, he and Tony knew what the, what the truth was there, but right. the government just leaned on him so hard, and everybody else that would have published the story to not look at it, listen to it, or whatever. So I mean that they had that part pretty damn accurate. Oh, I'd say so. Yeah, the youth killer of Helen and Tro- Helen of Troy. Yeah, yep. that was that was fun. Red Brown, good old Captain America was in that episode. He didn't have a name. He had maybe one or two lines, but God damn it, Captain America was there. And for all the young people, our Captain America was a ginormous fucking like perfect specimen of fucking physical ability. He yeah. didn't throw a fucking motorcycle up to the second story of a fucking building, have it land on the roof and not fall over sideways. That no, that, that's them skills, boy. <laughs> I think that was in the second movie. I'm not sure. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was cool to see Red Brown in it. Yeah. So, but... I think we went I, through most of the episodes here. I think... I think you know, we, we did hit Primal them all. Scream. We did the Trevi Collection, Choppa. Uh, the unnamed 16th episode. <laughs> and tr- Legacy of Terror... Youth killers. Uh, yeah, yeah. We hit everybody. Did did we sing "Domo Arigato" when we talked about Mister Ring? No, but "Domo Arigato," Mister Roboto. Yeah, yeah. Because I had that written down. Like, definitely make Mister Roboto, <laughs> 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 who he looked just like fucking Mister Roboto. Yeah, <laughs> and and I love he went to the morgue to steal the fucking flesh putty. So he can make himself a face, and I was kind of like, "Oh, it's Cromarty." <laughs> well, I was thinking Clayface from Batman. That's probably where they—I don't know what that's where they got that idea from for Clayface, but I'd like to think so on my own head cannon. Yeah, that works out. But then we got to get to the our usual question of, "Uh oh, if this came back, where would be the best home for it?" Honestly, I'd put it on HBO Max and set it during the 70s. I would not put it in the modern era. Very interesting. Probably smart, too. Uh, Because, again, everything in the modern era has an attention span of nanoseconds. Like, Well, you'd have to do the show vastly differently. Like, if you're going to have it to where he doesn't hit get his shots and he doesn't post them on fucking Instagram or Twitter immediately then what the hell is he doing as a reporter? He'd have to be using like a million different things. And you can't just say, oh, I lost my pictures. I got no story or the government pulled your story. It doesn't work like that these days. I just keep it during the 70s or even say the 80s, you know, keep it a period piece. Yeah. So you can limit the technology and you can still buy into, well, this, you know, people our age would be like, well, That is how we grew up. That is legit. You had to read a phone book. You had to go to the library. You know, this, that, and the other. You had to to do the legwork. 
for reporters, yeah. you still have to do legwork. But unless you're a wartime reporter <laughs> or, you know, a 2020 reporter, you, you don't really go do digging like this. No. And he did a lot of research on pretty much every episode. And he had like, contacts. He had good contacts. He had bad contacts. You know, <laughs> skeezy go betweens. Yeah, and bribing them all the time with like no money. Oh yeah, <laughs> then you'd have to write it off for a. <laughs> Please, it was twenty five dollars. Please, just finish signing this. Just, yeah. just sign. What did you have to give them? A used black and white TV for twenty five dollars. Yep. It was good to see Piglet come back too. That was pretty good that he that he swindled uh, swindled Carl out of seeing the body. Or no, he oh. was gonna. It was the box, wasn't it? The yeah, yeah, the personal belongings, and then there was nothing in it. <laughs> but he was so excited; he's going to have a TV in the corner of the morgue. Right. <laughs> oh well, he was going to play uh, Monty Hall. Monty Hall, <laughs> which was pretty funny. Agreed. Agreed. Now, for me personally, if if I would, if this was going to come back. I like your idea of sticking with the 70s. That's probably a great fucking decision. As far as a home, I, I think I'd rather see this go someplace like Hulu or or even Prime. Yeah, Prime would be acceptable. Hulu is still getting in the process of bought out by Disney. I don't want it disney because then we will never get a home video release. Ah, uh, yes. But... Disney also owns the rights to a fuck ton of cautionary tales, so there he wouldn't have a uh, lack of substance there either. That's true. I mean, there, there's numerous places it'd be good. I definitely would not do Netflix, regardless I'm... of people's opinions on Netflix. It's nothing. This is not a personal opinion on Netflix. I have Netflix. I like Netflix. Do they make the best decisions? No, they don't. They just canceled my eighteen ninety nine on me, so fuck them. But I just don't think Netflix is the kind of programming that they're looking for. So Kolchak would not really fit into their their landscape. Yeah. People like big, flashy, noisy, action-y, exciting bubblegum. This yep. this was fun. It was a little bubblegum. It had a little bit of flavor to it, but it was it had substance. There was more meat yeah. and potatoes to it. For as silly as it was, it, it was a smart show. And a fun show. I never felt like I was bored, constant entertaining. Whether some episodes were a miss, some were a hit, I had nothing but enjoyment the entire time. So I'm super pleased with this show. Yeah, I'm really glad we, we did this one. It's uh, It's been on the to-do list for a long time. For, I mean, for on the show, we've been talking about it since last Christmas with Steve. Yeah, yeah. No, I just this is just something, like I said, I've I've always liked it when I was growing up as a kid and as a teenager. And so I just, it's I, something I always wanted to do was to watch the whole thing. Never got around to it. And now that I'm middle-aged, I'm totally happy that I got to it. Finally. <laughs> I know. Right. It feels like it's long overdue to, to watch a fun classic show like this. Yeah. And, and next, next episode, when we get into Hannibal, I'll probably feel the same goddamn way. Cause again, same same thing i've something i've grown up loving uh i saw silence of the lambs when it came out in 91 my aunt took me to to see it in the theater yep. not realizing how bad of a movie it was actually going to be oh yeah she came out with a face palm like oh my god and begging for a glass of chianti yeah and i'm coming out with this great big shit eating grin on my face and eyes bright wide like that was the smartest motherfucker i've ever seen <laughs> fava beans indeed <laughs> yeah and and hannibal's been my superman ever since then yeah <laughs> i i'm excited for that so again i haven't seen the tv series so it's something i'm really looking forward to finally getting around to doing couldn't agree more and i don't know any other thoughts before i wrap this up for us I think that's it. That is it. Like, just go watch this, read monster tales, have fun. Like, this is good old fashioned monster fun. Yeah. And if, hey, if you're a physical media, you know, minds like we are, you can go ahead and go find those movies. Um, go to kinolorber.com, though, for those. They are having a while supplies last section. 
So quantities are running low, but they're $10 a piece. The show is $59.99, also at keenorlorber.com. So for, I know it's a little pricey, but the quality and the set of the show is outstanding. They got commentaries on episodes. The picture quality looks outstanding. It's just Blu-ray, but it's beautiful. Probably the best copy of the show is ever going to have. Don't waste time to get it. However, if you have lasted through both of our episodes and our Kolchak bonus movie breakdowns, we got a fun little giveaway I'm going to announce right now. That's right. We are going to be giving out a copy of the show and each of the movies. Although you got to go back to our first episode and listen in for a special keyword at the very end, the two prints, if you remember that very well. And we got a keyword right now. And that keyword is going to be sex bot. No, not oh, sex God bot. Damn it. <laughs> that was for Terminator. We are actually going to use the key term Helen of Troy. So make sure you write these down. You do have to send that to us either by Facebook through direct message or through Twitter, through private message or Instagram. Those are the only three ways we're going to accept an entry. So send those keywords in to us and you will enter and we will announce the winner very shortly. We will announce those details coming up shortly if they haven't been announced already. So thank you for tuning in, everybody. This is Suns and Shadows cast. I am Jeff. I am Kev. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to see your asses next time. All right.